the association among other demands. Now, 20 years later now, that was 2003, we have reached a new milestone. We have never given up the struggle and the struggle will continue. What I would like to do is to speak briefly about one of the components of the out-of-court settlement and that was the establishment of a monument towards the victims of torture and ill treatment during the colonial era. As you know, I have been in the movement, I've been in KHRC when we were told that there would be such a monument that will be established. I went to work as an architect. What the impression I got, what the British government wanted was maybe to put uh, some physical feature somewhere in the city with a plug with the appropriate text. I started to work with KHRC and with architect Diana Lee Smith, my partner who is here with us this morning. Most of you who know her worked on the memorial. So when the committee was established for the establishment of the memorial, we wanted the committee to make some key decisions before any architectural design work was commenced. One was that we wanted a memorial site which was in a public space within which the memorial will become a place. The Nairobi City County that was part of the committee, plus the British Embassy, National Museums, KHRC, and the veterans, with two of us just simply as ex officio members. The county gave us the site where we wanted that was next to the Freedom Corner. The next thing we tried to help the committee to make a decision that this memorial will be a place, not a statue or s where you can't interact, but it must have, it must tell the whole story and it must have a narrative. So we agreed to have 12 panels or plaques as they're called to tell the story. And they were created by the committee, but all of them had to be approved by the Foreign Office. But in the process when we were creating the narrative, it was not easy. There were tense moments, there were objections from the British Embassy on the use of the word Mama for Land and Freedom Army and many others. We stood our ground and finally they had to send it to foreign office and some of the panels had to be approved by William Haig, the foreign secretary. So that was a struggle. We achieved that. After having achieved the site and the concept and this, the committee decided to hold an architectural competition. So both of us left the committee because we wanted to enter the competition. The competition was organized by BORAC, which is the registration body of quantity surveyors and architects according to the rules and regulations and they established a jury. So architect me and Diana entered the competition and we won it. And that's the memorial that you see. What is ironic here is that our colonial masters established a memorial towards the victims of torture and ill-treatment. But our own government so far has done nothing to memorialize the human rights abuses in Kenya since 1963 as a form of symbolic reparation as recommended by Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission. Isn't that ironic? It is. It's very ironic. And the current government has no interest anyway. Okay? So, Mungai mentioned about memorialization, which is a form of symbolic reparation. And that is by our governments, as well as the British government. It's not just the British government any longer. And this is all detailed in the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Report. Struggle continues. I thank you for your attention. Asante sana.